Hello, I am Kobayashi from Sony. In this video, I would like to cover some basics on recurring neural networks, which are one type of neural network structure. We have prepared an introduction to neural network playlist, which can be found in the video description. If you are new to neural networks, we highly recommend that you also watch the videos in the playlist. First, let's discuss what exactly recurring neural networks are by comparing them to feed-forward neural networks which were discussed in previous videos as an image recognition solution. With feed-forward neural networks, data is processed in only way from input to output. In this neural network, an image, for example, is input and then processed in sequence. The end result of the processing is the output of an image recognition result. In contrast, RNNs are primarily used to process time series data. This neural network includes a feedback loop that sends output of processed information back as an input at the next time step in the sequence. Now that you have a basic idea of an RNN, let's take a closer look at how this neural network with a feedback loop works with actual examples. In this example, multiple letters such as S, O, and N are input in word order and then processed with character recognition logic one by one. The feedforward neural networks we have already covered have a one-to-one -one configuration to produce one answer from one input. If a person were to see this character string of S, O, and N, they would easily determine that the next letter could likely be a Y to form the word Sony. A feedforward neural network can only produce a result based on an input of one letter and so cannot factor time series data. If a neural network processes only the one letter, in this particular example, the image will likely be recognized as a T, which will be incorrect. In contrast, RNNs use a feedback loop to feed the output from the previous time step in the sequence as part of the input for the current time step in the sequence. For example, the output of the previous time step in the sequence is combined with the current time step in the sequence input via concatenate to be used in downstream in the neural network. RNNs are networks that have this feedback loop. Having feedback like this enables neural networks to use information about what data has been input or interpreted in previous recognition processes in each subsequent recognition process in the sequence. In this example, the information that the letters S, O, and N were input in this sequence before starting the process to recognize the final letter is used so that the neural network can correctly recognize this final character as a Y. Using an RNN to recognize this time series data enables the data and its sequence to be factored into the processing. We can expect better performance as a result. Using a recurrent neural network sequentially in this way, the flow of data is still actually a one-way flow. This is the same as with regular feedforward neural networks. You can think of this simple RNN as a feedforward neural network with one layer added at each time step in the sequence, for example. Each time step in the sequence is processed by a single neural network with the same weights. If you look at the figure, you can see that neural network parameters are common for each time step in the sequence. This figure represents the processing of four neural networks being repeatedly performed by one network. This neural network is trained by inputting data and then optimizing the time sequence parameters so that the output value of the loss function is minimized for each time step in the sequence. As was discussed in the mechanism of neural network training video, we use the backpropagation technique to calculate a gradient that is used to optimize parameters. Backpropagation is used in RNNs to go back in time series order. As such, backpropagation is referred to as backpropagation through time when used in reference to RNNs. This RNN can be configured in a variety of ways depending on the application. Taking the previous example, we have a pattern in which both the input and the output are time series data because a recognition result is output after processing input data. There are many multiple inputs and many multiple outputs, so the configuration is called many-to-many. -many. 
In other scenarios, time series data is only used as the input to produce a single output. As an example, we could have a pattern of using time series data of actual sentences to produce an output that simply identifies the sentence as positive or negative. We could also have a pattern with a word as each time step in the sequence input so as to output a single answer that categorizes the input sentence. In these scenarios, we have a single output corresponding to multiple items of input. This configuration is referred to as many-to-one. Conversely, a one-to-many configuration would produce multiple outputs based on a single input. An example of this would be taking an input of a single image and producing captions for the image. Captions are text consisting of multiple words that describe the image, so it involves the difficulty to output word sequence. We can use this pattern to achieve this processing. We also have many-to-many -many patterns in which both the input and output are time series data, but the input and output timings are not necessarily related. An example of this pattern would be a machine translation system. When translating from one language to another, especially ones with significantly different basic sentence structures such as with English into Japanese, both the placement of words within the sentence as well as the actual number of words will be different. This configuration can be used for such a purpose. Features can be extracted from a sentence of input which are then used to produce time series data as the output. In previous videos, we have discussed how deep learning is a general purpose technology. With RNNs and enough layers and neurons, we can achieve Turing completeness. In other words, these neural networks enable us to achieve anything that can be accomplished using computers. As such, RNNs can be applied to many different applications. For example, using video which is time series image data as the input and categories as the output, we can use this configuration to create video recognition systems that categorize video. We can make a stock price prediction system that takes past stock prices and time series data on daily stock price fluctuations to produce an output corresponding to the next stock price in the sequence. We could create a speech recognition system configured to take audio, which is a sequence of waves, as an input to produce a sequence of text strings. As briefly mentioned previously, a machine translation system would use sequences of words as both input and output. We can create different applications of this technology by changing inputs and outputs in different ways and creating different configurations of RNNs. I encourage you to think of new ways to utilize RNNs. Obtaining practical performance and capability with the simple RNN configuration introduced in this video would actually be quite difficult. To obtain practical levels of performance and capability, we would need a more complex RNN configuration such as the Long Short Term Memory LSTM configuration. I will talk about LSTM in more detail in a future video.